Hey everyone, welcome back. So this one was inspired by some talks I had with friends in the Warframe community discord. I'm sharing this in hopes of someone finding a way to make this setup better because quite frankly, it's a bit underwhelming at the moment. Remember the Flechette Orb Masterclass Vobin video I made? This is the budget version. Azima, the login reward pistol. It has an alt fire that spits out a disc which floats up after a few seconds and starts shooting bullets out in a plus shape while spinning slowly. The damage is questionable, but that's why we have so many supports for it today. Also, this is intended for endless missions, but it definitely has scaling problems due to this setup. Azima, part of the bullet hose family. This weapon has subpar crit and status. While the fire rate is high enough to sort of make the status on the build work, we're going to be sourcing some of that elsewhere as well. This is a slash based pistol. Under normal circumstances, this is what allows it to scale despite its single target nature, underwhelming DPS, and worrisome ammo economy. Wow, I'm really trashing into this weapon. Now, I could actually use this as a normal slash pistol, like this, but that's no fun. I want to turn this into a sprinkler of death, so that's exactly what we're going to try to do today. Anyways, just to keep in mind, what I'm showing you isn't really a wonderful new off-meta build. It's just the best I could get this to work. I 100% agree that there are better ways to use Mesa, but sometimes you just want to see how far you can push something. If you want to use this as an actual normal pistol, I would recommend trying this build. It performs well enough, but for a login reward and bullet hose, there are many better options. If you want to min-max the build even further and offload Viral to say, I don't know, an Exodia Contagion Primer or Zorus, then you would use this build. A little extra work, but more DPS. After all, you can't go wrong with Slash. Now if you're like me and you want some dumb fun, I don't use either of these builds. I'm using this third build, so I can play Flechette Orb Simulator Light TM. The first thing I would say is the build is unnecessarily expensive to run, with 6 prime mods including the Exilus, and it absolutely needs the Arcane Merciless for scaling. Let's go over a few interesting things about the Asthma's Altfire. The disc with the basic magazine size shoots for about 10.5 seconds. This can also be affected by fire rate, which makes it shoot faster and decreases the lifespan. The disc is also affected by multi-shot, which you won't see unless I equip Magnum Force, but as you can see, yes, more multi-shot shoots out more overlapping discs. Because the magazine size determines how long it can fire, both magazine mods like Prime Slip Magazine I'm bringing and ammo efficiency abilities can significantly lengthen the lifespan of the disc. A Prime Slip Magazine boosts the lifespan to slightly over 16 seconds. This duration will stack multiplicatively with Energized Munitions or Arcane Pistolier. Another interesting thing is Asthma's Altfire Disc snapshots buffs on deployment so long as you have the buffs when you shoot it, it doesn't matter if they expire afterwards and will last for the duration of the disc. There are certain exceptions like Roar or whatnot, but the big ones that do matter, like Energized Munitions or Pistolier, do snapshot. Normally you would want unranked viral mods if you want to preserve slash weight on the weapon, but we are not sourcing slash from the weapon today. Therefore we want as much viral as possible and we'll use a max rank 6060 mods. We will still be killing enemies with DOT, so Primed Expel is extremely useful for double dipping on those damage numbers, providing a 2.4 times multiplicative final damage increase. Hornet Strike because we need to kill things to get the ball rolling, and because Galvanize Shot does not give extra base damage to the alt fire turrets for some reason. Galvanized Multishot for the bonus discs I showed earlier, and the standard Prime to Crit mods. I want to warn you that the Exilus is extremely important on this build because the Altfire consumes the entire magazine of the weapon. It scales based on current magazine size at the time of shot, so you can't cheat this by all firing with low ammo. Without the ammo mutation, you will definitely run into sustained problems. Merciless helps you reload because you'll be doing that a fair amount, as well as the much needed bonus damage. Now Mesa Prime is our frame today. This is the first iteration of weird Mesa synergies I'm going to be trying to implement, and it's definitely quite ham-fisted, but just stay with me. You'll see this kind of setup pop up again in future videos, and it really is quite interesting. So the first thing you probably notice is I subsumed off her peacemakers for Roar. Yes, her regulators could definitely rip through enemies faster than the Azuma today, and even with some primer setups would be stronger than a lot of meta weapons. But this is just a proof of concept. I could definitely use better weapons than Azuma for this. The real shine of the build is just how all of the abilities come together. Not just what I can do with one button press of, say, Energized Munitions and a Tenet Tetra AoE Nuke Spam. And yes, I did say all abilities. This is probably the most technical one I've made so far, and the reason why I said it is just a proof of concept, as personally I do find it underwhelming. But hey, if you can think of a way to make it better, let me know down in the comments. 
So what else is on the build? Well, you can see we're running double augments. Ballistic Bullseye gives us 100% extra status on the Azuma disc. It is supposed to give flat status to projectile weapons, like Cito's Glaive, which you might see a video on that in the future, and normal mod status to hit scan weapons. It's very hard for me to test what Azuma falls under, but the free status is still free status. This will also be important to boost the amount of electric procs we inflict later. Yes, electric procs. Pay attention for that. Muzzle Flash is our other augment today, as our main source of CC. I did say this Lodo takes prohibitively long amounts of time to set up, and the kit has limited CC, so this will be the main way we get it. Once the ball is rolling, the kills will self funnel radio blinds around you to prevent the enemies from killing you while you're busy trying to keep up with a meat blender. The rest of the build is focused around trying to stack up some duration to make your 2, 3, and roar all last longer. Your 3 gives 95% damage reduction so you don't die while wasting time using this build. Prime Flow gives you that bigger energy bar so we can stock up on some overflow from Arcane Energize as the build is only running neutral efficiency and casting can get quite expensive otherwise. Rolling Guard can get you out of situations in a pinch, and the second Augur mod Reach gives us 80% energy to shield conversion to restore shield gating. With Reefer Spite, you can get 230% energy to shield conversion. Any of your abilities, including your 1, Shooting Gallery, which is the only one that you can actually recast when already active, can instantly fully restore your shields if you have a Decay Dragon key on. I've added back a little bit of range so that our muzzle flash can actually blind the enemies we're trying to kill as they get pulled in. The second arcane today is arcane pistolier. It's rank 4 instead of 5, because rank 5 gives us 102 ammo efficiency. Reaching 100% or higher in asthma resets it to having no ammo efficiency at all. So that's why I opted for rank 4. Yes, it's a bug on the alt fire. No, DE isn't going to fix it. The problem is actually getting headshot kills with this thing can get annoying because it isn't a beam because most of its kill potential comes from slash DOTs which will not activate Pistolier when you're busy shooting it. Aim to kill fodder units and make sure the roar is up for better alpha damage. Technically, this can scale because I brought Vassalok to armor strip enemies, but this isn't actually intended for multi-hour survivals, just a quick 30 minute run or so for weird testing memes. Another crucial element on this build is our primary weapon, Mutalis Quanta. Now, Sinoid Similar can substitute for this also, as it does work the exact same way. Basically, I'm only using this weapon for the alt fire orbs that shoots. I have exactly 200% multi shot, so that I always shoot a 3 stack orb. The rest of the mods here are irrelevant, except Bursting Mass, which can nuke enemies in a 15 meter radius after the orb expires in 9 seconds. It will deal all the energy absorbed with a 200% multiplier and a big AoE. I'm using 200% multi shot because the max bonus stacks of the alt fire orbs on Mutalis Quanta is reached with a triple stack shot. Sinoid Similar instead maxes out at 4 stacks, so you would run 100% multi shot and shoot the same spot twice to get four. Basically, we're going to shoot this orb on top of our Azuma discs. What does it do? Well, a fully stacked orb reduces our total damage by 33% as a final multiplier. Doesn't sound good, does it? In exchange, it grants 25% flat crit, pushing Azuma up to 70.9, 25% extra critical damage, and most importantly, 500% electric elemental damage. This 500% electric is where all our damage comes from, and the reason we ran max rank viral mods on Azuma. Now the picture should be coming together. We have a radial disc shooting out massive amounts of viral and electric for a sustained period, we blind enemies as it gets kills, and we pull them in to kill more of them. A true meat blender. Wait. Pull them in? Ah yes, so to do that, we will be running Megas Anomaly. In Operator Arcane, you basically just spam your 5 to pull anything in within a 30 meter radius. It's extremely useful. The big pull grabs almost anything and our blinds ensure we stay safe despite the amount of enemies we drag in. The Azuma Disc we shoot out Pistolier's proc lasts 108 seconds. So you have plenty of time to just shoot Middleless Orbs and spam your 5. If you have problems proccing Pistolier because you for some reason decided to run a multi-hour survival with this crap loadout, I suggest bringing this vast lock built, so we can armor strip something and kill it with Azuma to proc Pistolier again. Our pet of choice is Carrier with Ammo Case. This makes up for the obscene amounts of ammo Azuma eats up by dumping its alt fire. Combined with Prime Pistol Ammo Rotation, you'll be able to shoot multiple alt fires to lock down areas and each one uses an entire magazine. If you're being more conservative on alt fire usage, you can bring whatever you want and rely only on the Exilus mod, say probably a Panzer. Oh, and Xanarik for Energizing Dash because holy energy usage on this build. And that's it, my questionable Azuma Steel Path quote unquote short term 
endurance build. Does it have KPS problems? Somewhat. You need to find good spots quickly and will still probably need the life support towers. Acolytes are a slight problem against this turret fest, and for that I would recommend using your vast lock against them as the armor strip goes a long way, and they take a lot of damage from pellet based weapons like that. It will also help with the alpha damage of turrets, but if you do set up enough turrets and have a fresh quanta bubble dumped over them, you can weave the acolyte through them and they will die with enough turret spam. But remember, the point is just to have fun, as this is an example of a theory craft that became reality for the sake of it rather than an actual metacraft idea. But that's the reason we play Warframe and what makes it so great, right? The freedom to do whatever we want, with any kind of build at our fingertips. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible like I've done with covering the Sisters of Parvels and Plague Star updates. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds like this on a nearly daily basis. I'm also preparing to get you the info first once more new war info drops. You won't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.